Okay folks, welcome to my fourth installment of basic computer repair and men's hair care tips. Uh, I'm also adding an element, drinking beer. Today I want to talk to you guys about the absolute need for flux. Uh, we've done this before, but remember, practice is uh, Practice is key. So I'm gonna find a place where I have desoldered a MOSFET. Okay, yeah, here it is. All right, here's an area where I've uh, desoldered a MOSFET. And I shot this video uh, yesterday, but I forgot to turn my sound on. So today we're gonna to go over something that we've already learned, but remember we have to practice. I wanna remove that solder. It's a big old clump of solder. And I'm gonna put first on it, this non-Amtec cheap flux, okay? And I am going to remove uh, that solder using uh, a wick and my soldering iron. Got my wick right here, <clears throat> soldering iron, and I usually keep mine at uh, 450, or 405 degrees, not 450, for pretty much everything. Uh, I've got solder, or uh, I've got flux uh, on the solder, and I am going to wick off this large amount of solder using the copper wick. And see how that copper wick soaks it up? Going into the copper. Uh, sometimes your copper wick is gonna get stuck on you. Uh, what I suggest is flux, flux, and more flux, and heat. Okay, so I've, I've wicked that off. Well, that's gone up quite, quite a ways. Looks like it's stuck somewhere else. Right here, let's get off of there. Come on, get off, get off. See your, it can, oh, it got stuck on something completely different. So we're just gonna clean this up the rest of the way. And I would say, for the most part, that this area is clean. Okay, so I've removed uh, flux, or removed solder using the solder wick. Now I'm going to wash the area away with, uh, wash all this flux away with uh, alcohol. Let me get right back here in the center. And one of the things you see people using an awful lot on uh, videos uh, is Q-tips. What I use instead are lint-free uh, sheets. I also have some lint-free, uh, uh, oh, they're kind of like Q-tips, uh, but these lint-free sheets, as you can see, don't leave any, uh, like uh, with a cotton swab, uh, you struggle with uh, cotton staying on there. So hitting it with a lint-free sheet, you don't have to, to deal with that, or the, the lint-free swabs. So let's just clean that up a little more. And I'm just using my finger, some people use a brush. Okay, so this area is now ready to have solder put on it to replace the MOSFET that I took off. Now, I'm gonna show you why you need flux. All right, so I've got my uh, solder and this is solder used for pipes and guys here once again it doesn't matter the size of the solder as long as it has lead in it 60 40 
uh, if you buy your solder like this, thicker, it costs less. It costs more money to make uh, that solder thin. So I'm gonna go down here, we're on the microscope, and I am going to try and tin this area to get it ready for another MOSFET without flux. So that means I'm trying to get it on these four pins. And as you can see, I'm not having very good luck. Look how it just flew, uh, flowed over there. And okay, I got, I got those four pins just fine, okay? But I wanna show you what happens when you add flux. Okay, just gonna add some flux here. Basically, I couldn't control where the solder was going. So I'll add some flux, and now I take my soldering iron with that same solder on there, and the solder only goes where you want it to. It will only go to the heated metal. You see how I clean that up with ju by just adding flux. Now that's too much solder for that, but you get the point. Flux helps control where solder is going. Okay? That's why you absolutely have to use flux. Use flux in removing things, use flux in uh, putting things back on. There's no such thing as too much flux. Now I'm gonna feature uh, what you guys know as low melt solder. Now where I'm currently at, uh, I don't have the, the low melt solder typically sold in the US. I've got low melt solder in the form of little beads, okay? And that's all you really need is one bead for most things. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna grab a board and uh, I'm gonna demonstrate low melt solder uh, and how powerful it is by taking something off that you would normally need to uh, use hot air. Okay. So I'm gonna choose this motherboard here and I'm gonna take off this USB port. Okay, this USB port right here. All right, so I'm gonna go to the, look at the front and see what we've got. Now that's just uh, going through. So let me get lined up in the, uh... okay, so th those uh, points right there, there's a hinge point right here and another right there, and then these are, are uh, tiny little pins. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add flux to the area. Hopefully my board won't move too much on me because I do not have a board holder. So I've added my flux. And then I'm going to take just one pellet. And essentially what low melt solder is, is a combination of tin and bismuth. It's pretty much anything, uh, any kind of solder that has bismuth added to it. There are several variations of it. And as you can see, that's very tiny. That's all you really need. So I'm just gonna place that right on my board, right near where I wanna start. I'm gonna grab my soldering iron and I'm gonna work the uh, low melt into the hinge. Whoops. It stays liquid for a very long time because it melts at a very short temperature, or a very small, uh, low temperature. I'm gonna get each one of these pens. Let's see if I can get more to the center, here we go. Getting each one of these pens, get it soaked in there, and then over here to this other hinge, 
get it soaked in. Get a little more light on this situation. And I'll go back and hit each one of these little pins and the bracket. There we go, that's light. Okay, and I'm just holding it on the bracket. And you'll find that whether or not uh, you use uh, hot air to remove this, it takes very little after you apply low melt solder to remove things. And so far, in my use of low melt solder, I have not needed to use hot air at all. And let's see if we can remove this without hot air at all. One of the ways we can do it is by pushing the pins down, getting them pushed down. And you guys saw how small that bead was. That's all the low melt solder that I needed to use. Keep these two hinges hot and looky there. It just fell right out. Okay guys, you need to get low melt solder. You just saw this USB port literally fall out without needing any hot air. Let me show it to you. Without needing any hot air at all. Just with the use of low melt solder. Uh, thanks for joining me guys. Uh, I hope to find a clip at the end, pomade re uh, related. Remember, practice, practice, practice. I'll see you next time.